Today I'm building a triple spawner blaze farm, two new buildings, a gravel farm and a huge gold farm that produces more quartz and clay than I know what to do with. Three farms in one video? How do I have the time? Let's create. Gold is the name of the game that we're playing today. I need lots of it. You're not supposed to be in there, are you? Fortunately for me, in the last episode, we built this absolutely ginormous factory that's got a massive iron farm in it, a massive cobblestone generator, and a big old boiler for steam power. And the iron farm's down there, and the gold farm's gonna go up here. And this doesn't look like a lot of room, but trust me, it's gonna be plenty. Speaking of iron farms, geez, have I made some changes to this room. I've decorated, which means I've had to add a couple more mods to this pack. Quick sideline. See, I really wanted to use this andesite scaffolding in order to make sort of platforms around the whole thing and staircases upwards, but it's really not ideal for that. And when you do extend it out, it's got this sort of wood colour on top or it's just hollow, which just doesn't look all that good. So I added a couple of the Macaws mods that allow us to have these bridges and scaffolding and things like that, which is absolutely fantastic. So not much has changed with the actual farm layout. We've still got the millstones, which are creating crazy amounts of gravel, but we've got all of these stairs and platforms now so we can get around. I've also walled the entire thing in and put bars around to sort of segment off the areas where you're not supposed to go. Then you can just see everything going on in here and it feels a little bit more like an actual factory that's protecting you from the safety of falling in the machines. And we've got access to all of the areas behind. We can come around this way, get down here and access all of these speed controllers and things like that. So it's all interconnected and tied off and walled off and I think it looks absolutely great. I really, really like it. So I want to do exactly the same thing as this but obviously with a slightly different layout for the gold and the reason it needs a different layout is because gold has a different process in order to get a very small chance of generating gold nuggets we're going to be washing soul sand and in order to get soul sand we're going to be haunting normal sand and in order to get normal sand we're going to be crushing gravel which is also going to give us clay and even more flint so it's a really good thing we've got this absolutely ginormous cobblestone generator the thing is though this has got a hundred thousand cobble in it and it's growing and growing and growing and even though we're using absolutely tons of it going through there, we're generating too much. So before we do anything at all, I need to get something in place on here to stop it from processing and overfilling itself. I also need to get all of this iron and flint back to our storage system. And as well as that, I need to get a bunch of that cobble that we're generating all the way around here into this building and up these stairs so that we can get our andesite processing unit going again because it's completely out of cobble. And then I need to get all of that andesite that this is processing out of there and into our storage building. In. So I've got a lot of work to do before we can even start thinking about gold farms. So in order to control this machine and stop it overproducing, I'm going to use a threshold switch. And that basically monitors how much is in here and gives a redstone output depending on whether it's too full or not full enough. All I'm going to do is stick a redstone link on top of that, put a couple of pieces of cobble on that, and then put another redstone link over here next to this powered rail like that, put another couple of pieces of cobble on there, and then invert this one so that's receiving. So now that's going to be powered when this is too full. So I need to invert it so it's only powered when it's not full enough so now cobble from there into there upstairs how hard could it be oh geez there's all sorts of stuff going on here this isn't going to be easy especially with this staircase here it really doesn't lend itself very well to being at that spot i think this might be another good opportunity to use these macaw stairs and then we could go out of this wall to bring cobble in there and there we go that kind of works i'm trying to keep it out of the way as much as possible which is quite tricky with these stairs but now we've got this staircase that goes up there comes up here and we've got plenty of room around here to get around right cobble through this wall then well that was a lot easier than i thought it was going to be if i stick on a brass funnel there we should get cobble going down there hopefully it's not going to overflow it won't it's going to stop if it can't take any more the power for this is all coming from just behind our steam generator so that's all nice hidden and that should just continue taking cobble all the way along here up these wonderful little conveyors like this and then into our incredible machine which is now once again working so i guess i just need to fill in a few of these holes and make it not look quite so janky oh geez i'm gonna do that i guess just by making everything look a little bit more intentional so all i've done is covered up the hole put this little sort of pillbox thing here which is decorated in a similar style to everything else and then just extended that wall out there which looks a little bit strange, but it kind of does the job and it gives us this nice sort of archway over that water wheel thing as well. Now, in all honesty, this andesite farm is still a little bit unreliable. Sometimes it'll run for days and days with no problem at all. And other times, well, it just fills up with gravel. As you can see, I've just pulled out 
nearly six stacks of gravel from this which clogged it up and stopped it producing anything so i could really do with a system that's going to guarantee that we get the right number of flint and the right number of gravel in this at each time which really shouldn't be all that difficult get rid of that and that smash these to bits smash those to bits dig a big old hole in the floor put in three storage drawers stick in a few chutes put a little bit of floor back in put in a conveyor here and a conveyor there just like that move this pump back one block just like that put a cog there and in case chain drive there a gearbox there a gearbox there a chain drive there and then spin it round there pop another gearbox there take that funnel off there put it on there instead and spin it around and then just put a funnel there there and there and there we go we're back to normal and hopefully this will work a bit better then it seems very much to be keeping on top of exactly what I needed it to be able to do. So there we go. Job done. And jobs are good. And all of the andesite is now going underground along this crazy conveyor system up onto there and up into the storage system into here. And look, it's counting up. So now the only things left to connect to the storage system are our iron and flint that are coming in from our iron farm. But there's no point in connecting those yet because we're going to have the gold farm upstairs and that'll all need connecting as well. So we might as well wait until we've got that in up here before we decide how we're going to get the items out of here and over to our storage building. Which means I suppose it's time to start building this gold farm. Oh jeez. In order to build the gold farm though, we're going to pretty much be starting with exactly the same thing we've got going on here, which is just milling down all of this cobblestone into gravel. Which begs the question, if we need two of them, why have one of these in this room here and then an identical one directly above it? Wouldn't it make more sense to have a separate building that was just processing tons and tons of gravel from all this cobble and then feeding that into the gold farm up here and the iron farm in here? But then that does mean dismantling all of this. And I really like this because I think it looks amazing. But I think it could be even better. But where am I going to build a new gravel farm? There's very little room inside of this building left. We've got this space here, but I'm going to have another boiler there. We've got this tiny little bit of space here, but I don't think that's enough room. So realistically, I think this space here is going to be perfect. Well, it's not the biggest or most fanciest building that I've ever made, but it does fit in quite nicely with this factory next to it, and it really doesn't need to be all that big. That said, I do need to fit in two times as many millstones as this, and realistically, inside here isn't all that big. Oh, jeez. So somehow I've got to get cobblestone coming in in high quantities, mill it all down into gravel, and have that all going back out in high quantities, one onto this level here and one onto that level there. And there are 15 millstones there, so we're going to need 30 altogether, Oh my goodness, 30 millstones. No problem, mate. I'll make it right now. Okay, items in, up, across, through the tunnels, split onto all of those conveyors. Many, 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 many grindstones. Right, power. <laughs> oh, we're going to power it. Oh, I haven't got the cobblestone actually coming in yet either. <laughs> I think I'm getting somewhere. I have power and everything is running at an incredible speed. Let me talk you through it. Jeez. Okay, we need to start back in the other building. So I have taken another set of chutes coming out of this storage vault, just like we had on the other side going to our andesite farm, although there's no funnel on this yet. And that's going down through the floor. I've also taken some of our power from here and that's going down into the floor there. The chutes come down onto this conveyor. This conveyor is also transporting our power along here underground to the second building, at which point we've got a speed controller in there blowing a fan as fast as it can up through the floor. And then we've got power going up through the floor here. And on the surface, that just looks like this. We've got that chute coming up to this conveyor here. And then we've got the rest of the power coming in through there. This conveyor is going into a brass chute into another stack of chutes there with another fan on it going at ridiculous speed and that's powering everything else so with all these gearboxes and cogs and stuff like that everything in here is powered if we fly up to the top you can see how crazy it all looks but is it gonna work i don't know the only one way to find out and there we go cobble is going in we should see it hopefully starting to come through here in a second there we go it's coming through here 
it's going into there it's going up to the top there we go and it is backing up that's good so i wanted to see this i didn't want to see these conveyors empty i wanted to see them have something on them because we know we're getting enough cobblestone in here to process through all of the fans then and there we go gravel coming in ridiculously quickly nothing's backing up nothing's getting stuck this is absolutely wonderful which means we're getting a ridiculous amount of gravel in there crazy but that but this iron vault's not going to hold things for long so i need to turn it all off i could really do with the clutch system on here redstone links let's put one on here for now and i guess we can put the clutch here because this is going to be a good place to any to stop it so let's just break that there Put the clutch in there, the other redstone link on there. Put that into receive. Now I need a couple of pieces of gravel to set the right one on there. Where am I going to get gravel? Quick, give me that gravel. Gravel, 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 gravel. Excellent. So when it's powered, it's off. And when it's unpowered, it's on. And jobs are good. Done. This is 100% done in here now. And I should hopefully be able to get the gravel up this conveyor here and through that wall there into the gold farm. So if I turn this on. We now should get gravel flying up there and into the gold farm. It works. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For, like, less than 10 seconds with the gravel. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hmm, that works too well. There we go. That looks a little bit better now that that's all encased in there. Lovely. Oh, nice. Yes. Very professional. Just like real life. Okay, let's build an incredibly over-the-top but incredibly satisfying gold farm. And you can probably see by the storage drawers I got to the side, I've already done, well, <laughs> three of them. But I had to delete them because they weren't as good as what I thought they could be. And this one is going to be amazing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick a shaft there. And we need to elevate this as high as we can. We need a belt coming off that like that. That's going to have three brass funnels underneath it. And underneath that are going to be the grindstones. In the gap below where they come out, we need another little conveyor just like that. That only wants to be three long. And then at this point here, we're actually going to step down to there. And we need four brass tunnels along those. And they need filters on. And these filters are to only allow flint and clay through these funnels so that we can divert those onto a separate line and we'll stick a chain drive in there and that's going to power those and then i guess we can put on our other massive grind wheels on there at this point here we're going to have some compacting drawers in fact the whole thing's going to be using compacting drawers instead of basins and presses because it saves us room and well we really don't need to waste that extra energy compacting stuff when there's compacting drawers in the game and one's going to have clay and the other one's going to have flint. And if we extend that belt all the way up to there and then just attach that one to there like that and then stick a couple of brass funnels on there like that, that's going to collect all of the clay and flint in there. So we need brass tunnels as well. One there, one there, one with clay and one with flint. Now we need to mess about with the sand. And we're going to have three new belts for that and three more brass tunnels and each one of these is going to have a sand filter on there to make sure that only sand comes through here and then we're going to go to the other end of this farm and start working backwards along this back wall here we're going to have a whole bunch of chain drives and they're going to be powering a whole bunch of encased fans and we're going to do exactly the same thing a few rows above that as well just like that in front of the top ones we're going to have a whole bunch of salt sand and the bottom ones are all going to have water in front although i can't put that in yet otherwise it's going to go everywhere and ruin everything we're going to have two more compacting drawers one for quartz and one for gold then there's going to be a couple of belts coming behind those like that and then at this point here we're going to have three belts running from one side of the room to the other and now we just extend that one to there that one to there and that to there stick on two more brass funnels there we go brass funnel brass funnel iron nuggets and quartz to stop anything else going through there up at the top here we're going to have another three sets of belts just like that at this point we might as well start lighting the soul fire and we're going to run fence gates all the way along this conveyor here open those all up and fill this area with water so back to this point we now need to get these three Three lanes here to meet up with those three up there i'm going to put three belts along here like this now we need to bring these belts up here to meet those there we go all of our belts are nicely connected and that's pretty much the farm obviously we haven't got power to any of these things but that's basically it so as a quick overview that crushes everything into sand clay and flint the clay and flint get taken off to the side and put into these compacting drawers the sand goes up here in rows of three gets haunted by this stuff drops down here by this point it's soul sand it's going to get washed into quartz and gold nuggets and they're going to go through into these compacting drawers here and that's it so power let's get it all plugged in oh i almost forgot another ingredient as well we need shoots 
like this between these sets of conveyors. And that's that speed controller plugged in. That's getting those belts going and they're going in the right direction, which is fantastic. Now these wanna go at 20. There we go, that's as fast as they're gonna go. Now all I gotta do is get everything else linked up and joined together. So with these last two chain drives here, I believe that's everything connected together it is. There we go, they're nice and fast now. I think that's everything. I don't think I'm missing anything at all. Oh geez, are we ready to do a test? Let's just put in one brass funnel for now, not all three, and see how we get on. There we go, sand, wow, it all went through. The sand is going round, but is that sand gonna get haunted in time? It is. It's getting haunted. It's going down the chutes. It's getting washed. Wow, look at all this. Backed up over Oh, I haven't done any power on these belts. Oh, now it's all coming through. And it's going into there. Wonderful. We're getting clay in again, though. Where's the clay coming from? Shouldn't be any clay. Oh, I can't see any reason why we can't put the other two, two funnels on here then and get this thing at full capacity. Many, many, many sand. <laughs> Going up our conveyor system. Many, 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 many sand getting turned into soul sand. Wow, this is ridiculous. Look at it changing just before it gets into the end. <laughs> and then many, 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 many soul sands. All getting washed into golden quartz and coming through into our fantastic storage drawers. We've already got over a thousand quartz. We've only been running it a couple of minutes. Okay, I've emptied out the drawers. It is time for a rate test, of course. Three two one go well we're seven minutes in and apparently we have encountered a problem everything has ground to a standstill and that is because somehow we're getting sand and gravel through here that shouldn't be possible but it is hmm I and mean, we've got a bit of a backup going on over there now as well oh geez so i've added in some more brass tunnels i've put the filters for the quartz and the gold nuggets on there and on these three here there is a filter that's basically saying anything other than quartz and gold nuggets to come out of the side here and go into that fire there. That's the plan. Is it going to work? Let's go turn on the gravel machine and start getting some gravel in here. Is it coming? It is. It is coming up the machine. Here comes the gravel. Everything seems to be getting haunted okay, so that's a good sign. And everything seems to be getting washed okay as well, so that's a good sign. This coming onto a single belt now, though, is significantly bottlenecking the system, which is not ideal. So I could really do with that one coming all the way across. There we go. That sped everything up a little bit. Much better. Ah, oh, there we go. We just had uh, soul soil just going through into there, and it went straight into the fire. Perfect. And some more of it as well. It's working. Don't know why we're getting so much soul soil and sand. But it's going into the fire, so it doesn't matter. The question is, why is it not getting washed? Why is the sand getting down there? Why does everything work when you do it in creative, but when you do it in survival, it doesn't? Good news is we're not getting a backup over here now, though. All right, let's turn it all off again. Clear it all out again. And let's try a rate test again. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, stop. Okay, let's go see what we got. Starting with the clay and the flint, we got 126 blocks of clay and 113 blocks of flint. So basically, we've got a free terracotta farm on our hands if we bother to put in a cooking machine for this. So that's pretty good. Or a brick farm or, you know, terracotta pot farm. Basically, it's a clay farm, which is wonderful. We've got 1,271 blocks of quartz in five minutes. But the big question is, how much iron did we get in five minutes? 20 ingots. In an hour, that's 240 ingots, which is basically 27 blocks of gold. That's not bad at all. I don't even want to know how much quartz that is in an hour. Jeez. <laughs> so it might not be the fastest gold farm in the world, but it is a gold farm and it is producing plenty of gold, quartz, clay and flint. So now what I'm going to do is make all of this area look as beautiful as it did down at the iron farm and then move on, I guess, which means I don't need any of these anymore. I have been decorating. And the first thing you might see is there's a wall there now. And if we go through this door, similarly to what I did with the iron farm, I've used a whole bunch of these railings and these McCaws bridges. And now we've got access to all of the different areas that we need. We can see all of the different components. It's all relatively safe. We can come onto this little gantry here and check out all of that stuff going under there. We can pop down here and check out all of that going down down there. 
it's all lovely. I like it. I like how all of these things sort of bring it together to be like an actual factory. I think it looks great. And all of that time this has been running, we've been gathering plenty of stuff and it's all been coming through. So we've got a whole bunch of gold blocks now, a ridiculous amount of quartz. I mean, what am I going to do with all that quartz? Tons and tons of clay and tons and tons of flint as well. And while all this is absolutely lovely and looks really nice... I've now got to figure out how I'm going to get all of these items out of here and the ones out of my iron farm as well and get them over to the storage area. Oh, geez, I don't know if I want to. I do want to, but I also really like how it is. Hmm. What do you think, peeps? Let me know in the comments. In the last episode, I crafted one of my traveler's backpacks into this, which is a spider traveler's backpack. And I couldn't figure out why, while I was wearing it, I couldn't climb up walls. You see, on here it says, have you ever tried climbing walls? But thanks to you lovely people in the comments, I now know how to fix it. I have to go into there and turn on the ability. And now... I can climb up walls just like a spider. Ow. Just like a spider, which is a really useful thing to be able to do. Not that you can you can't cling on. You just you just start falling again. But it's not really what I wanted. What I really wanted was this Blaze Traveler's backpack because that gives you immunity to fall damage. But as I pointed out, I only have one blaze rod, so I wasn't able to craft one. However, also in the last episode, I realized that I could carry blaze spawners and we brought one back from the nether, which I've just left over here. So that got me thinking, why don't I make a cheap and easy blaze farm? And while we're making blaze farms, we might as well throw a couple of other types of spawner in here. There's a skeleton one I found earlier while I was digging out these caves. Chuck down there next to that one. And there's one more right over here by that first village that we stole all the villagers from. Which I need to go down this horrible little janky staircase to get to. But I found my way there eventually. Thank you very much. I have another one for the collection. There we go. That's three spawners. Oh, I just want a couple more blaze ones. All right, the first one I'm going to get is this one here. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I just want to have a quick fly around here just to see if there's any more on this fortress or if I'm going to need to find another fortress to get another one. Now I've got that one. Oh, ah. Uh oh. Aha. I think this could be another fortress down here. Oh, all I gotta do is fly. How hard could it be? My trusty jagger pack, making nether travels very easy. Oh, although you, you kind of sink when the terrain goes down. No, I didn't get up there. I need to go up, jetpack, not down. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, he said he was making it easy. Well, it was. Ah, oh. sneak through here. Ow. Oh my goodness me. It's a very dark fortress and I'm sinking again. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of wither skeletons. Fuel. Fuel is good. Ah! Whoa! Fire is bad. Just need a blaze spawner. I only need one. There's... Oh, there's two over here. Get it. Go! Run away! Back home, please! Jeez. Whew. Oh, it's bedtime. And there we go. We now have... Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, light. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Run away! Sleep! Sleep! What do you mean? There's monsters nearby! It appears to be safe. This is good news. Go away. Go away. Leave me alone. No! Hey, I just finished. Well, that was rude. Right, well, the tower is done. I wanted it to be sort of tall and thin, getting wider at the top and a little bit temple looking, and I think I've achieved that. In terms of blocks, it's in keeping with the other builds around, but it does sort of stand out a little bit like a sore thumb with its design, but that's intentional because it's a mob farm. It's sort of a magical, temple thing. So it's a different build style, but I think it works great. I'm really happy with it. The foundation I've done a little bit of decoration on with some leaves and some barrels, and inside, well, at the moment, other than this very, very rubbish staircase, there's absolutely absolutely nothing. And I've changed my plans a bit as well. This is no longer going to be a multi-mob farm. This is just going to be for blazes. One thing I am going to need though is some tinted glass. It just so happens that not long ago I found a geode and hopefully some of these buds are ready now. Well, I've managed to get 11. According to this, if I crush them, I'm going to get more than I would just from mining them with fortune. So that's good. I can also use a chopping board to get four from it as well. Oh, the actual block of amethyst. There we go. Look at this. I'm just turning amethyst into shards. Don't even need the clusters. Incredible. So it's time to get building the mob farm. I started by putting in a layer of tinted glass, smashing out a hole in the back wall, crafting up a bunch of signs, sticking those on the wall opposite the glass, and then filling that little crevice up with water. Below this, I added in another wall of tinted glass, as well as three pieces along the bottom here, and then put a deployer on the wall, gave it a diamond sword, and hit it with the wrench to put it into use mode, and then filled up that remaining hole with tinted glass. I threw in a lava bucket, finished off the tinted glass, and now that's ready to go. On the back of 
second deployer, I put a brass funnel and the diamond sword came back out. So I used a filter and told it to totally deny diamond swords. Put the filter on the brass funnel, gave the deployer back its sword. Now all I needed was power. On the side of the building, I dug a hole, put a bucket of water in it and threw on a water wheel. And then used gearboxes and shafts to connect that upstairs on the inside of the building. I then stuck on a big cog, threw on a speed controller and connected the deployer to the speed controller using some more shafts. Then put in a new floor, removed the funnel again and then put it on the other side. Put it in some chutes down below it, which for now just linked to a chest on the floor below. And all that was left was to put in the spawners. I flew upstairs, took out the lanterns and then proceeded to go one by one to the spawners, pick them up and put them in place. Ow. Which turned out was a much more dangerous job than I thought. Oh dear. Uh, help. With the final spawner in place and the wall back together again, it was time to see this farm in action, which meant giving it some more speed. But there we go, job's a good one. Don't worry about the flames and the fire everywhere. There's no fire spread on this world. It'll just look like it's on fire. It's not actually gonna go anywhere, which is good. And now we are killing blazes. Lots and lots of blazes. That diamond sword will run out of durability eventually. And yes, it could do with looting on there, but we'll worry about that later. For now, I wanna see what we're getting in our chest. And we're getting blaze rods and experience and ash as well. Which should mean I have all the ingredients that I need to make the, one of these backpacks. First of all, I need to craft some fire charges. And now, there we go. I can turn my traveler's backpack into a blaze backpack. Put it on. Activate the ability. And now, I shouldn't take any fall damage. Let's find out. Let's go up. Up and up and up and up and up. And just fall. Ah, oh, no fall damage. Amazing. I'm just like a blaze. <laughs> 